Last year, I would like to discuss uh, the issue of truncation by depth uh, using the principle of stratification, which is based on the potential outcomes. The setup is that uh, we have uh, patients as units, and the treatment is, say, new medicine, which is supposed to lower the cholesterol level. Truncation here is the fact that the, some patients die during the study. So what is the truncation by death problem? Well, the fact is that the cholesterol level is undefined for the people who, are, who died. Um, you could say that those people cholesterol level is extremely low and zero, but um, typically we're interested in cholesterol level of people who are still alive. Okay. Then the problem then is that the survivors in the treatment group are not com necessarily comparable to those in the control group. This happens if the treatment affects the survival. In particular, suppose the treatment saves the lives of people with high cholesterol. If that's the case, the treatment group will end up with many more people with high cholesterol level than the control group, some of those people who may end up dying. Okay. So suppose in the randomized experiment, at the beginning, the treatment group and control group were comparable. But because the new medicine saves some of the people, uh, the lives of the, some of the people with high cholesterol in the treatment group, what would end up happening is that the treatment group end up with many people with high cholesterol level, whereas some of those people in the control group at the similar level of uh, high cholesterol level end up dying. So yeah, it looks as if the new medicine is actually increasing the cholesterol level rather than decreasing it. But that's not because of the treatment effect, but that's because the fact that the treatment is affecting the patient's survival. Okay, so in general, we shouldn't be adjusting for the post-treatment variable, variables that are potentially affected by the treatment, because that itself is essentially controlling for the part of the effect. Okay, so the effect of this new medicine, part of that effect was saving the lives of people with high cholesterol level. But if you control it in the uh, incorrect way, this type of um, results could happen, bias could be induced. Uh, there are a lot of problem, uh, similar examples of this truncation by death problem. For example, dropout in the program evaluation. So if you're evaluating the efficacy of, say, job training program, if you only focus on the people who end up staying in the program, that could induce this post treatment bias because the dropout may be affected by the program itself. Right? So the people who are happy with the program may end up staying. And depending on how that differ between the treatment group and the control group, the outcome, um, you know, if you just look at the people who stayed in the program, that could uh, lead to the bias. There are other examples in the canvassing example. There may, you know, there may be a registration and the vote choice. If you just look at the vote choice, that matters only among the people who, um, who actually turned out. And if the turnout is uh, in, uh, affected by the canvassing, that may also be an issue. So how do, how do we, uh, how we might address this truncation by this problem using uh, potential outcomes framework? So we're going to use uh, something called principal stratification, which was originally introduced by Frank Lapis and Lou. So what we observe here is the, say, binary treatment is either one, one or zero. And we also uh, observed the survival variable, uh, W, which is equal to one if, if a patient survives, and zero if not. The observed variable uh, outcome, observed outcome, outcome is only observed when you survive, so when the W equal one. Okay? So if the W equals zero, the cholesterol outcome is not defined cholesterol level is not defined. Now let's look at the potential variables. The truncation, the survival, may be affected by the treatment. So there is a survival status if you are treated. That's W of 1. Survival status under control condition is W of 0. Okay, so that's a potential truncation variable. 
we can also think about potential outcomes, which is only defined when W equal 1. So it's a function of the both treatment and the survival, but it's only defined when the W equal 1. So Y0,0 zero, zero and Y10 do not exist or not defined. So the only thing that's defined is Y11 one, one and Y01. So there are four principal strata. Principal strata are the strata, the groups, defined by the potential outcomes. In this case, W0 and W1, potential survival uh, variable. Okay? Survival status under the treatment and survival status under the control. If both are one, W0 and W1 is both are one, we might call them always survivor. Because these people would all would survive regardless of the treatment status. If it's both a zero, they die regardless of the treatment, so they are non-survivor, always non-survivor. Uh, there are also people who are who survive only when treated, if, uh, which is W0 equals zero and W1 equal one. And the other way around, there might be also people who survive only when untreated. So there's four different types. Since these are defined based on the potential outcomes, they are you can think of this as a characteristic, like pre-treatment characteristics of each individual types of people. You know, certain types of people always survive regardless of the treatment. Certain types of people uh, who don't have good health may always die um, regardless of the treatment. And then there are others who are affected by the treatment in terms of their survival. Okay, so there's each unit can be classified into one of these four principal strata. So you can uh, group a set, group, you know, some patients based on their uh, the, these potential outcomes, and that forms principal strata. Now we do not know which principal strata each patient belongs to. So the reason why we don't know is we don't know, we don't observe W0 and W1 at the same time for any given patient. If the patient is treated, then we observe W1, but not W0. If the patient is not treated, we observe W0, but not W1. Okay? So as a result, we don't know, we can eliminate the two of the four types, but we don't know which strata, uh, strata each patient belongs to. However, we can still define the causal effect, and how do we estimate this with certain assumptions? We'll discuss that later in the course. But one thing I want to note in this, at this point is that causal effect is only defined for always survivors. Right? Because if you don't survive in one of the two conditions, or even both conditions, then the outcome is not defined. Right? So remember the causal effect is a contrast of the potential outcomes. In this case, it's y of one and y of zero. Outcome under the treatment, outcome under the control condition. And that's only defined when, um, when for only for the people who would survive regardless of the treatment condition. Only then we can compare the two potential outcomes. Okay, for the rest of the people, we cannot define uh, the causal effect. So the causal effect here is only defined for the subgroup of, of the population and of the, of the patients. And unfortunately, we don't even know which patient belongs to this particular group. Okay. If you observe someone who's died either in the triggering condition or control condition, we know those people won't be in this group. However, just because somebody survives under treatment condition, we don't know if that person is always a survivor because we don't know whether that person survived under the control condition. So as you can see, the causal um, in inference is a little tricky. We have to think about, we always have to think about these potential outcomes and then how they um, interact, uh, even to define causal effects, let alone estimating it. Okay, just to summarize uh, this lecture, um, 
what I want you to take away is the causal effect is always a function of potential outcomes. But the fundamental problem of causal inference tells you we only get to observe one of these multiple potential outcomes. So causal inference is a very difficult missing data problem. We also discussed the basic assumptions of the notation that I introduced of potential outcome notation. We assume some causal ordering, G may affect the outcome, not the other way around. We assume the consistency, we observe, observe the outcome is equal to potential outcome depending on the treatment status. And the basic um, causal inference notation we introduced at the beginning assumed no interference between units. That is, somebody's outcome is only affected by that person's treatment status, not treatment status of other people. However, in the social science problems, this assumption is often violated, so we'll be discussing how we relax this assumption um, in the weeks to come. So we looked at different types of causal effect. We begin by defining the individual effects, and then we averaged over groups of units, uh, the entire sample, or the, among the treated, or the population. We also looked at the spillover effects and direct effects. Um, if spillover effects is the effect of somebody else's treatment assignment on your outcome. Direct effect is the effect of your own treatment assignment holding other people's treatment assignment constant. And then finally, we discussed the principle of stratification, which defines the different types of units based on potential outcomes. And it has a wide applicability. Um, and as an example, I introduced the problem of truncation by death. Okay, thank you.